Hey everyone, my name is Perry. I'm an electrical engineer and in this video we're going to watch Dr. Stone Season 3 Episode 2 to see how accurate all the science and technology in this anime really are. から Wow, alright, this butler is preparing some pristine cuisine because that is not what early explorers actually ate while they were on these voyages. And when I say early explorers, I'm talking about before world maps were drawn and anyone knew, knew where anything was. We were basically eating salted pork, beef, fish with a side of crackers and cheese. Mind you, the longer that these sailors were out to sea, the less the quality of the food became because back then there was not much of an understanding about refrigeration or ventilation or just proper food storage. The other thing are the rats and the animals and other stowaway creatures that would get on board and eat all the food. Then there's the diseases that they brought to all the sailors and there's no doctor when you're in the middle of the Atlantic. You just have to hope that your body fights it. ああ、バターやらドライフルーツやら砂糖やらで、ひたすら自由水奪うんだな。水気がねえとそもそも菌が繁殖しねえ。つまり腐らねえ。That is correct. Without water, bacteria can't reproduce. Yes, that is factually correct. The one thing I just want to add to that though is that this does not mean that no bacteria are present in the bread. It just means that they, the ones that exist can't reproduce. So the, the reason I specify that is because many single cell bacteria can go for long periods of time without moisture. It's just those bacteria are gonna stay single celled and there's not gonna be any more of them because for bacteria to actually produce and make more of themselves, there has to be a presence of water. <laughs> パンが膨らむのは焼き始めの9分だけ。その僅かな時間でどれだけパンに熱エネルギーを伝えられるか、釜の機密性が重要に。That's not entirely correct. The Okay, so first the the water vapor thing that Senko said that is true, but the thermal conductivity of water vapor is not that much better than air, especially with modern day technology. We, we can that that's not really a problem. As far as what the butler said, the rising of red only takes place in the first nine minutes is not entirely true, and this is based on a multitude of factors. Like for, for one, what are the ratio of ingredients that you use in the flour to actually make the bread, along with any other ingredients that you put in? the amount of yeast that you put in, right? So ingredients and the ratio between them is a big factor in terms of the first nine minutes, right? Additionally, the temperature of the furnace, the placement of bread in the furnace, because not all parts of the furnace are heated equally, so it's depending on where that bread is. It could be seven minutes, it could be 10 minutes, it could be any number. That's why, I mean, you can't say in a scientific formula, and certainly baking, there is a science here, absolutely. It's not possible to say that all all bread in all ovens everywhere rise in the first nine minutes because there are so many variables what she can say is given given the uh moisture content of the air and which is the humidity <laughs> and then the temperature of the oven the placement of the bread within that oven and all of these other factors that i named this bread will rise in the first nine minutes but i promise you you take that exact same ingredients in the exact same order, and the only thing that you change is the conventional oven that is used. Our ovens today, way better than that. おなじみ水酸化ナトリウム。銀、それにアンモニア。冷蔵商品から取る口いいやつか。こいつら混ぜた怪しい液にガラスを漬け込む。隠性。That is super, super cool. Yeah, that is the process that you would do to make a silver mirror. And especially with the ingredients you listed, that is absolutely correct. Sodium hydroxide, 
you need silver nitrate, sugar, and ammonia. And really what the main important thing here is that the order of chemical reactions matters when it comes to the outcome that you are desiring. So the sodium hydroxide and the silver nitrate are the first things that you mix together. And then you put it in an aqueous solution, which is a very, very fancy chemistry nerd engineering STEM version of saying, dunk it in water. <laughs> and after you dunk the sodium hydroxide and the silver nitrate in water, you just continue to mix it until what you end up with is a certain like weird colored mixture and then you just continue like diluting it in water and then that's when you add your ammonia and it is important to make sure that while this is all going on the mixture is cold and then you slowly heat it up don't boil it and then from there you actually put in your little glass and that is when when you continue to mix it one side I mean if you cover the other side will actually turn into a perfect mirror the reason we add sugar at the end is because sugar is oxidized by the silver nitrate and reduces it to pure silver, which will evenly coat the glass. Silver being a key part of this process because silver coatings are ideal for observing all wavelengths of light. The metal has high reflectivity and low emissivity, meaning it absorbs very little light, gives off barely a sheen of its own, and those combination of traits leads to an excellent, perfect silver mirror. Since the mid-1900s, we've been using metal mercury to make mirrors because, for one, it's cheaper, and it does tend to last a little bit longer. さあ、撮るわよ。こういうカメラってあれだよね。左右がひっくり返るやつ。いや、プリズム入ってっからな。反転もしねえ。That that is really that is super super cool how they're able to make a camera. And th that used to be a real camera that is used all the time, but that's not the... For, I, I have such a hard time pronouncing that word, so I'm not even going to try and butcher it for you guys, but that camera is not the first camera ever made. It's the first camera that had practical widespread use and was used a lot in the United States especially. How they work is by taking the silver-plated sheet Senku just made and treating it with fumes to make the surface even more light-sensitive, and then you would place that behind the lens of the camera in front of the image that you're trying to capture, because the lens will also focus the light even further. Once you have all that set up, the photographer will tell you what to do, and that is wait. And you wait, and you just wait, and you just sit there for as long as the photographer tells you to do, because if it's a lot of light exposure where you are, then you only have to sit there for a couple of seconds. But the darker the area is, the longer you're gonna have to wait for the camera to actually capture the image and put it on the metal plate. The darkest areas of this image are bare silver from the mirror that was just made, and they're very, very fragile. Most, if not all of them, have scruffs around the edges exposing it to silver sheen. And one particular image that is really popular is this one of Abraham Lincoln. And each photo that you took using this camera would all be black and white. Color didn't happen for many, many years later. This was a super cool episode of Dr. Stone. I really, really like this one. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching if you made it this far. And I hope you got some value out of this video. And I wish you all the best rest of your day.